You know, Zelda, like most Nintendo games, is that game made for the whole family. The inputs are friendly for a child or an adult to be able to play without difficulties, the characters are nice, the story is a hero's journey simple enough for everyone to understand and identify with the good, wanting to defeat evil, and generally speaking, the whole games is a beautiful friendly world. The player has to make good characters happy, with evil banished from there. It is possible to identify who good characters are with their acts, what they do and where they are on the map, even music from places where the player should feel good is meant to pass the comfort of being safe, with happy chords. But then... For a while, it was argued that one or two Zelda was dark, always remembering Majora's Mask or Twilight Princess as possible examples in this universe of Zeldas that were strange and, yes, maybe these two games stood out for having more dark moments, but have you noticed how every Zelda has at least one moment that we could call eerie? It's almost like a signature, like Ganondorf, like Link, like Princess Zelda, like so many other things in the series, it feels like it's necessary that at some point something happens and destroy the friendly and familiar game and brings a weird moment, something out of the ordinary, the dark past about a character or a side quest that feels like a thriller movie. And why does Zelda games do this? More importantly, why do we like it so much? In my opinion, this relationship of making dark moments has a reason, but first it is important to understand how Zelda games build these moments. First, this moment is felt through an aesthetic and cultural response, in the aesthetic factor, it is important to highlight how Zelda games are extremely colorful, and that's a crucial aspect, because the amount of color helps Zelda games to explore an aesthetic universe of themes that mixes vast cultural elements and stands out by spilling cultural stereotypes through its colors. Zelda games uses aesthetic elements from African culture, with masks and geometric figures, to elements of Asian legends, with the dojos, Japanese architecture, stories of spirits that are mixing with nature elements, as well as elements of medieval Europe, with castles, characteristic melee weapons and others. Zelda games' vast repertoire of references can only be seen, precisely because its colors point the references in an almost exaggerated and very specific way, if Zelda games were a bunch of monochrome games, it is possible that the references would not stand out so good, precisely because with fewer colors some cultural elements would not highlight, such as clothes, masks and architecture details. In this sense, it is almost essential that the Zelda games are as colorful as they are, so that we can visually feel the reference changes, so also explore this great compilation of real-world legends reinterpreted in such a classic series of games. However, this brings another important factor, the amount of colors of the Zelda series also allows the player not to feel bothered by the change of environments, it never feels strange for the player to go from a red lava environment, to a water blue environment, to a green forest environment, 
to an orange desert environment, because everything seems to make sense within the world of Zelda. So that the colors become part of the reference points in the map and what is good and what is bad to go. With these factors, this mix between references from all possible human cultures and a lot of colors, there is a vast repertoire for the mix between what is pleasing and what is terrifying when the player approaches something known and moves away to something unknown. Notice something. Before, I mentioned common colors and environments of various regions of any game in the Zelda series, the hot, reddish regions of the Gorons and Fire, the quiet, bluish regions of the Zohas, the green and familiar regions of forests or villages, such as Kakariko, Orden, Kokiri, and the orange of the vast and distant deserts, but there are a bunch of other colors to use that haven't been cited. What about shades of purple, or black? The ability to use more colors and have no association with friendly or classic regions is what allows Zelda stories to flirt so often with eerie moments. Because devs can still use purple, black, among other shades and colors to confront the player with red, green, blue, among other colors that the player has become accustomed to understanding as comfortable regions, whenever players see the unfolding of something that seems mysterious and eerie in Zelda games, the player can notice the insertion of dark tones or shades of purple, because it is there that the player begins to feel the discomfort, the lack of the colors that he knows and that. Delimit traditional good regions in the map. In this way, the colors make the first impression of what's comfortable and what's not, but it's just when Zelda games begins to explore the endless mix of cultural references that it deepens, because the player never knows what's going on. If the player are walking on a side quest with some familiar element of general pop culture, like swords, horses and classic heroes, or something completely strange to modern pop understanding, like some obscure legend interpreted with masks, ancestral, spirits and death. In other words, the player is never fully understanding the references that will appear, always surprised by something new so that the player does not feel entirely comfortable or fully understood in the world lore. In addition to the visual discussion, they're a point of understanding in the songs that Zelda Games plays, because the songs also help to separate what is comfortable and what is not. In addition to being such a good music, Zelda's songs have a characteristic exaggeration effect. This is because the songs do not try to fool the player, on the contrary. The songs try to guide what the player should feel in the region of the map where is reinforcing the stereotypes, if the player is to feel comfortable, the music played will be very comfortable. If the player is to feel uncomfortable, the music played will be very uncomfortable. In this way, with the colors and the mix of cultural elements, the music supports the strangeness of certain moments, because music can quickly change from a comfortable moment to an uncomfortable one, as the player leaves one region of the map to another knowing that he is leaving the moment of the game where things are nice to the entrance of a moment where things will be eerie. Okay, but Zelda makes this aesthetic construction through colors, cultural elements and music and presents what is eerie and what is not for its player with a complex and interconnected argument. But why do we like it so much? At this point, I think the answer is a bit more subjective. The rhythm break in Zelda's friendly environment makes the eerie aspects of the game even more prominent, maybe if Zelda was a 100% horror game, these weird little moments would go unnoticed, but since the game is mostly a familiar and nice game, when the player comes across something that escapes normality, this effect is to seem even stranger than it really is. It's not just that. The player also likes these oddities because they enrich the number of conflicting feelings when playing the same game, just look at the amount of videos on YouTube debating these mysterious aspects of the lore of Zelda games. At this point, 
The affection for eerie moments is with a somewhat inexplicable love that every individual has with fear and the unknown in familiar environments. We like to watch horror movies at home, only to be afraid to move around in environments we already know and feel safe. We like mystery stories that may exist close to our daily lives. The mystery affects the human being because it is something intangible, a world where the real and the imaginary, what is flesh and what is spirit are confused and cannot be clearly explained, and the individual tries to enter this world through the keyhole of something he is allowed to look at, a tiny part of the explanation behind the mystery. This eerie moment brings value to life and history, because it makes the individual feel alive by feeling that fear which affects psychologically and also physically, with the heart palpitating, or that weird itchy feeling that something is watching you. Therefore, Zelda is a game of contrasts that work, from its colors, its cultural references, its songs, but also the possibility of being malleable to the plot, when it allows itself to leave the simple story and the linear journey of the hero, between figures of good and evil, to something more nebulous, a moment of mystery, that can be circumvented with some environment where the player imagines that he is not invited to know everything, although he is willing to face this challenge of facing the unknown. What do you think of these mysteries? And how do they feel? Do you like to be in limbo and deal with these questions? Is Zelda right to keep bringing these moments to the players? I think so, it's these moments that make Zelda weird, even more special.